Hello, fiends, friends, and familiars. My name is Matt Orozco from Macab Daily, and I am beyond elated to be joined by three amazing folks. We have Jill Vargizian, from, or Jill Six, as you might know her, the director of Ghost Game. We also have the two leads of Ghost Game, Kia Dorsey, who plays Laura, as well as Zane Hadir, who plays Vin. Thank you all for joining me today and having this conversation. Thank you. Uh, well, I know we don't have all the time in the world, um, so I'm going to jump right into some questions. And my first one's for you, Jill. I noticed that um, Adam Caesar was the writer on, on Ghost Game, and he's obviously been quite a quite a well known um, known commodity here in the horror community. So I'm curious how you two got connected. Yeah, um, we first connected on a different script of his, probably now almost four years ago. Something he had written with Jamie Nash, who works with. Ed Sanchez a lot. It's all the same film family here. Um, and so for a while, we were trying to get that project off the ground. And like a lot, we didn't, it didn't get anywhere yet. So we, um, we just like kind of kept in touch. I was reading his books, love the clown in the cornfield series. <laughs> and this project came along. They already had it like kind of set up with a studio. It was like ready to be made. And Adam suggested me as a, option for the director and then I Ed Sanchez was a producer on it who I already knew and was kind of like a this is how like 10 years of networking can pay off but you never know when it's going to um but Ed was like I know Jill I'll reach out to her and when I got the email I was like so freaking excited and read the script loved it and yeah we were like shooting it literally two months after it, probably the first time I read it that's amazing and it's nice to see that the connections you built in the horror community do, you know, of course, it is reciprocal. Or it is reciprocal. It is who you know. Um, but moving over to you, Kia, you know, um, I'm going to venture a guess here that you're probably not uh, someone who breaks and enters into a lot of places. So <laughs> I'm wondering how you got prepared for a role like this, where essentially, you know, you're playing the ghost game, which I'd never heard of, by the way, until this movie. So I um, learned something new uh, all the time. <laughs> um, I actually break in about five houses a week. It's my okay. favorite. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> no, ghost. So, ghost game. I hope doesn't exist. Um, <laughs> but frogging does, which is uh, something that it's based on. And yeah, I prepared for it by just like watching a few YouTube videos about frogging and. Um, doing enough research to freak me out, but to get into the mindset of Laura. And then I created a playlist that kind of like got me in her shoes. And um, that was kind of the gist of it. But yeah, no, no breaking in the houses, none of that. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't see there's a, I don't know if there's a bail budget, right? To, to bust you out if you, you happen to get caught <laughs> practicing for the role or something like that. She but, was doing her research. <laughs> right? She was, she was just preparing for a role that's totally passable and legal in I think 32 of the states. But you know, Laura's, um, you know, Laura's obviously a big risk taker, you know, and did you say that that's something that you are as kind of outside of this role or is that something that was kind of new, you know, that's not part of who you are as a person um, outside of your work? Um, I'm definitely a risk taker, obviously not in the same way as Laura, but I, I definitely do things kind of like spur of the moment, spontaneous um, leap of faith type of thing. Um not breaking the houses, but like I'll pack up and move. Like I packed up and moved to LA in the middle of the pandemic. I was like, yep, time to go. Um, so I, I definitely, I definitely love a good spontaneous moment, but I will not be breaking in the houses. <laughs> yeah, it's probably, it's probably best. Um, that, that seems like a very um, dangerous hobby to say the least. Yeah. <laughs> Zane, over to you, you know, um, you're, you're kind of the voice of reason to some extent in Vin, but ultimately you succumb to wanting to, you know, just what any good partner would want to do, right? Share um, the things that their partner likes to do on their spare time, even if they're possibly <laughs> illegal. Um, so, you know, is that kind of get over to you about the question on like, is that, are you tend to be more kind of the voice of reason um, as an individual? Or are you tend to be more of the risk taker? Like I'm just going to go and do the craziest thing I can think of. Risk taker. Yeah. I feel like I'm like with certain decisions, I'm very impulsive for that reason. I don't think it's very rational. I'm, I, I'm, definitely the last voice of reason in this call right here. <laughs> um, yeah, but I, I did like playing then because of how completely like flipped it was from my own personality. I, I, I would never think of, oh, we're going to get in trouble if we break into this house. Oh, you just hear, let's break into a house. <laughs> uh, 
but definitely uh, <laughs> it was a it was a challenge to to like flip into into then uh but it it definitely felt good being right like being the right voice like yo let's not do this <laughs> and then you're in the right um so yeah that, that was that was fun yeah, I, I asked the same, something similar of Michael when I spoke to him about his role. I'm like, you know, I imagine you're probably not that unlikable of a guy. So how do you prepare <laughs> to kind of take on this role of someone who is, you know, trying to do their best, but at the same time, unlikable. So it's nice to get to kind of play around with personality and and especially for your role. And, you know, going back to you, Jill, you know, I know um, you had such great success off the stylist, which we're huge fans of here over at Macabre Daily. And, you know, it's so interesting. I've talked with a couple of filmmakers who have either completed or just completing their for their second feature. So I'm curious to know, you know, what are some lessons learned that you kind of took away from the stylus that you were able to apply here for Ghost Game? Yeah. Um, oh, man, everything. Because I feel like every project is like a completely new learning process. And uh, this was so different for me because I was I'm used to, like with the stylus. I'm one of the main producers also and a co-writer. And so I also had to be like with the main team of producers figuring out everything. <laughs> um, so it was a, nice to have a, some like to be a director only for the first time. Um, also then though challenging because I'm like control freak Jill wants to make all the decisions. <laughs> um, but uh, no, yeah, it was so helpful. And also this film was working with like a totally new cast and crew aside from Vienna Moss, the young actor in the film, she was in the stylist, but everything about it was challenging. And it was exciting to, this is like bragging, but exciting to see like that I could do it with all new people. Um, and uh, so yeah, it was really challenging. It was a lot of fun. I mean, you, it's something to be proud of. I think it's, you know, is, um, <clears throat> is that, you know, it is, yeah, you know, it's, it's hard to go from having, a broad, a broad locus of control to having to narrow that down. But, you know, again, it also removed some of the barriers of having to do it all um, and then just getting to focus on that one thing. Um, and, you know, kind of a question for all of you, you know, Jill, you kind of answered this a little bit around kind of what was most challenging, but I'm also curious to know for each of you, what was something that was really rewarding about making Ghost Game? And then what was probably the thing you found to be the most challenging? So I'll start with you, Kia, you know, what was, what was the reward and what was the most challenging part for you? Um, I will say rewarding was convincing Jill that I had this like badassery to me and then like just showing up on set and she's like you're a complete goofball and I was like that's acting <laughs> showbiz baby yeah I was like woo, thank you um so it was really rewarding to to like truthfully step into this character and who was completely different from me and and my personality and like tell her story and and people believe it. And, you know, even after people watch it at festivals this summer, they were like, you are not the same. I'm like, yes, thank you. So that was rewarding. <laughs> um, but it was also, a, I'm, I'm gonna say it was a double-edged sword and say that that was also a challenge as well um, because there were moments where I would like, some of my goofiness would come out on set and I was like, ooh, Kia, pull that back, bring that in, you know? Um, there was one thing, I don't even think it made it into the final film but I like kicked my leg up at Zane at one point. And I was like, that was so goofy. That like, that's not something Laura would do. <laughs> thank God it didn't make it in. Cause like I went back and thought about it and I was like, oh no, that's not Laura at all. Um, so I'm going to say that was my reward and challenge. It's, it's a double-edged sword. You definitely see that as someone with a strong personality. You have to mask it sometimes to, 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 yeah. to, to do what you need to do. Um, yeah. What about you, Zane? What was kind of the most challenging, rewarding thing for you? The most rewarding thing for me is when we would shoot some scenes and then after like we're almost done for the day, uh, they would usually look at it on the screen to see if anything's missing or if they like how it shot. And I would see how it looked on the screen. And this was before it was edited. And I, I, I'd just be amazed because the house looks really good. The acting looks really good. Everything looked perfect. And that kind of gave me more like I'm sure it was like that for everybody, too. It gives you motivation to keep doing it and, and do better. Even you're like, if this looks good, I can make this next scene look even better. Um, My biggest challenge. Honestly, it was the beginning because I was really, really nervous. Um, The cast I had around me were like. I mean, you've seen their resume. They're they're really good at what they what they do. And this was my first uh, feature film, and I was nervous about 
like can I keep up with these guys and but it was it was really good because I got to absorb a lot of things from everybody and you know even even Kia and and Sam and Michael and even Jill like they all they all really give you like a piece of advice and you kind of like grab onto those pieces and it helps you throughout the whole the whole shoot Yeah. And just imagine you'll have so many of those pieces in, you know, decades later when you've got all of this, right. What, what about you, Jill? Um, I know the, the challenging thing sounds like, you know, I was able to get this, just this directing part done, but was there anything else to add about the reward or the challenge that you experienced in ghost game? Um, there's like so many crazy challenges we could talk about. I also wanted to brag about Zane doing like tons of stunts and even like fight court, like choreography Hey. and shit for the first time. Um, there's lots of stuff going on in this movie. Right in the deep end, Zane. Yeah. Um, yeah. First movie, you're the lead of a horror movie. You're doing stunts, fights. We have gu prop guns, so many things. Um, uh, where do I, even, I was going to say something specific about the challenge. Um, I don't know. Like I said, it was just so rewarding to, to see we could pull it off with, or with, I could with like a whole new crew. Um, and it was also really rewarding to see, well, it was my first time working with any stunts and a stunt coordinator as a director. And um, that was really fun and challenging. So it was like, that was challenging, rewarding, We had, you know, many moments, not to spoil, but our Mike plays the stepdad of Vienna's character, Sam, and he's abusive. And they have a lot of moments that are very uncomfortable and physical. And I was very scared about all of that because I obviously don't want to put anyone in any messed up situation, especially a kid. And we had such an incredible stunt coordinator, uh, who we called lovingly they call mascot um and a, he even brought also a fight coordinator for a few days but he was so so great at teaching people like just working with him was so awesome i feel like he could be just any sort of a teacher he just knows how to speak to people and how to make you feel confident and like you can go to him with any question or it was just so rewarding to see these moments and also very when i rewatch the movie like the violent stuff but with with our young actor vienna it's nothing insane she's totally safe um but when i see it played back i'm like it looks so good that it is really uncomfortable to see but knowing like she was in charge of all of it physically and also like was so excited she wanted to be like rigged up into stunts she had nothing to do with just to yanked around and like thrown off <laughs> she was like can i do that and we're like no you can't I mean, it does look like fun. I'm sure it hurts, yes but I've seen those videos of the kind of when you take the effects out or you take the kind of uh, digital effects out of it. It's like, yeah, that person just got thrown against that wall. Uh, that's what that looked like. But um, but it is impressive. And, you know, I think, again, a lot of the stunt work looks great in the film. Um, so it's, it's nice to hear that not only was it kind of a, a good set where everyone was working together, but also a lot of people learned from that. And it sounds like, Zane, we're going to see you in a John Wick movie any day now. Yeah. So... You know, um, my last question for you all is, is one of my favorite ones and kind of go to each of you on this, which is if you were asked to program a double feature and Ghost Game was one of the movies, what's the other movie that you would pair up with it? So I'll start with you, Zane. What, what's the what's the first movie you'd think of to put Give up me a like double 30 feature? seconds to think on it. I, I, I've got like 60 in my head right now. All right. Well, if anyone's got a top of mind, feel free to jump in. I'm going way too hard thinking about this too much. Um, I mean, I made this actually watch list for everyone that was like a combo of lots of home invasions and haunted house films because it's, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, God. I'm I not would good do at this. like Casper, the friendly. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's perfect for Kia. No bullshit. This is the, this is like the third time someone's brought Casper in as that as an answer to that question for totally different movies. But I think it's because it adds so much levity to Yeah. what is usually horror that it's like, OK, the friendly ghost before I would, the love I would one. go friendly ghost and then I would go the ghost that you don't really want at your house. Right. Love it. <laughs> Maybe f I would say I'd Insidious. go paranormal activity. <laughs> so you haven't seen what was your Zane? <laughs> um, I would say paranormal activity just because of all the camcorded stuff. Um, I feel like it'd be a nice blend, but I also don't watch horror movies, so.
Well, you know, it's uh, I think that's that's a pretty good, pretty good addition there. And then Insidious, you know, I think of course, Joe, that sounds like a fantastic double feature. <laughs> I was throwing I've watched that in that. there, or I don't know if we we haven't discussed that. That's is Zane's traumatizing movie as growing up, so I thought he would want to watch it. I'd have to give somebody else the general. <laughs> we need to get a signed poster for him from the Insidious cast. I know from the guys the, the that made it. Pie? I know the guys that made Insidious. I'll get a special you copy sent to you. Me, <laughs> happy birthday, happy early birthday, Zane. Um, you know, it's uh, sounds like you got you've got a, a something scary coming your way. But you know, um, I'll agree with you that the scene where that person's walking by the window and then they're in the room traumatized me for life. But uh, thankfully, I'd already seen wor far worse things in my real life at that point. So I'm like, ah, oh, that's not that scary. So. With that in mind, thank you all for humming me with a few of your double feature recommendations here. And I just want to remind everyone watching this, please go out and support Ghost Game when it comes to theaters on the 18th of October. And if you don't get a chance to see it in theater for whatever reason, don't carry your excuse. You don't have one because it's going to be on VOD on the 22nd, just in time to celebrate spooky season. So I want to thank all three of you for the time today. Really appreciate the conversation and um, hope to see you all again, um, You know, hopefully in a horror movie. So thanks for the time. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you. Hello, fiends, friends, and familiars. This is Matt Orozco from Macabre Daily here, and I am excited to be joined by none other than legendary actor from the Blair Witch Project, Michael C. Williams, who is starring in a brand new film from Dread Presents, Ghost Game, which will be coming out in theaters on October 18th. And if you can't see it in theaters, you can catch it on VOD on the 22nd. So, Michael, thank you so much for taking some time to chat with me today. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me, Matt. Appreciate it. Well, it is my pleasure, and uh, I know we don't have all the time in the world, so I'll jump right into our questions. The first one is, you know, you play the role of Pete, which is kind of a down-on-his-luck father, um, author who is uh, reluctantly moving into a house that may have a history to it. And I feel okay in assuming that you're probably a much better person and a nicer dad than Pete was. So I'm wondering, how how is it, how do you prepare to get into a role to become someone as unlikable as Pete is? Well, that's a great question. And I try not to look at it that way. You know, from my perspective, Pete is trying to be the best version of, of, of himself that he can be. And, um, you know, he's not looking at himself as a bad guy. He's trying to, you know, he's buying this old house and he's hopeful for, you know, his wife and his stepkid that they're going to have a bright future. And he's just got one more really special novel in him that's going to sell. And He's really trying to make make a like a great life ahead for them. So I just really looked at it that way. And obviously, like, as you said, he turns out not to be the greatest guy. But I don't think he anybody I don't think anybody walks into their day going like, I'm going to just be <laughs> I'm going to have a bad day here. <laughs> I'm going to be the worst person. Like, instead of people saying I'm going to be the best person of my or best version of myself today, I'll be the worst version yeah. of myself. But I like yeah, that. And you I and like I both that. Know. Yeah, he doesn't make it that way. He doesn't do what he <laughs> wants to do. But yeah, I wouldn't think that's. <laughs> yeah, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt as well. And, um, you know, kind of on that point, as far as kind of his background, you know, how much of that was in the script and how much of this was what you added to it? Interesting. Um, I, I did add a lot to it. I, I had to kind of create a bit of a backstory for him based on you know, some things that are mentioned and referenced in the script. And I actually worked with Jill uh, on those kinds of things and a little bit with Emily Bennett as well. Um, although Emily and I decided that we wouldn't sort of tell all of our history to each other um, because then maybe they wouldn't be together. But it was fun to be it was a very collaborative set and it was fun to work with Jill on a bit of a backstory just to make sure I had like her blessing on where I think he was coming from into the story. Um, and I love doing that kind of work. But then to be honest, what I do is I do that kind of work and then I let it go. And I try to be in the moment with the other actors that were just, they were just so giving, so wonderful, uh, Vienna and Emily, at least it, those were the folks that I directly got to work with in those scenes. Um, and a little bit Zane, just, just a wonderful set to work on and be able to share uh, some of those moments with those folks. But yeah, I do a backstory and then I kind of kind of let it go and just get in the moment and see what happens. Yeah, I mean, I was reading a little bit in your background, you know, and kind of the work you do on acting and improv teaching on the side. So I was always curious to know how that shows up in the work you're doing, especially when you're working with a director like Jill. Um, and I, I don't want to butcher your name, but I think it's 
Givar Givar Gizian. Uh, Givar Gizian. Givar Gizian. Yeah, give her give, give her Gizzy in, and I'm probably botching it. It's definitely possible because she kind of goes by Jill Six, and that's how I know her. Um, yeah, that's, give her Gizzy. In. Yeah, I know her through that as well. And you know, you mentioned a little bit working with her on this, and I'm curious to know, given someone like yourself who's been in in the industry for for decades at this point, you know, working with someone who's now doing this is their second feature film. What was it like working with her on set, and how did you two work together? It was so exciting because of that collaborative spirit, because we had spoken way before I even got there and I had watched the stylist and just thought the world of her work. And to me, like I was that young person in the industry that, you know, people noticed and gave a chance and kind of I love working with younger folks because they're the future of the industry. So that goes with with Jill and even some of the actors and actresses on the set. Um, to me, it's like. That's what it's all about. Not that I, you know, of course, I'll, I'll work with anybody. But when you have somebody right. with talent that's young, it's so exciting to just watch watch their careers grow and blossom and see how they work. But the collaborative style with which she worked with was really appreciated by me. We had a lot of fun. We had a lot of laughs. Um, and, you know, there were definitely some things that we had to figure out on the spot. Um, and that's what happens on film sets. It's like it's supposed to be one way, but, oh, we can't do it that way because of X, Y, and Z. So a lot of troubleshooting, which I, I just saw. Um, you know, I saw her, you know, take that on very well. And it was fun to watch. Yeah, it's been said that, you know, getting a film made is an act of a miracle in and of itself, because things never really go as they're intended or scripted or things change in the last minute. So the fact that you have someone who's open to that kind of um, agility, uh, certainly, I'm sure makes it a lot, lot more of a, of a fun, but also more fulfilling experience. And you know, somewhat uh, similar to the situation in the film, you know, I'd never heard of ghost gaming before, but now I feel quite enlightened. Um, so I'm curious to know if you were, let's say, living in a house and someone was playing the ghost game on you, how would you react to something like that? I would just say at some point I would likely react the way Pete reacts, <laughs> you know, <laughs> maybe, maybe the rest of Pete wouldn't happen here, but like, man, could you imagine that your privacy be completely invaded and in your mind, as soon as you realize it's happening, you have to now go back and imagine all the moments that they may or may not have seen. So there's right. this feeling of complete invasion of privacy and this feeling of like absolutely having no idea what it is that they've even invaded because you don't know when you when you first lay eyes on somebody who says we've been in your house. That's what a ugh, what a gross feeling, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, it's the it is the kind of thing it's almost like, you know, being naked in a dream. It's like there are certain places where you feel safe, you know, and your home should be one of them. So the fact that people can enter it without you knowing it, observe you without you being aware, um, that's the stuff of true nightmares. And, you know, as I, I have my last question for you here, Michael, which is if you were asked to plan a double feature with Ghost Game, what's the other film that you'd put alongside it? Yeah, that is some question. Hmm. Um, I probably would put a comedy next to it. <laughs> <laughs> a little levity? Yeah, just like, all right, let's play Dumb and Dumber and let it roll so we can, <laughs> you know, not be so tense. Um, if I were to do a horror, though, next to it, like a double feature horror, boy, that is, I'd say probably, well, I'll do one because it revolves around a house. And let's say, let's be honest, like, to me, the house is such a main character in this film, and it's such, so beautifully shot um, by Justin Brooks. I would say I would do Amityville Horror because of that house and the iconic way we look at that. And I was a kid when that came out. And to me, that's like to me, that's like the classic haunted house uh, kind of film where the house is the lead, you know? Oh, yeah. I mean, I still still won't put my fingers uh, on windowsills uh, when I know that they can close because of that movie. So, <laughs> yeah, yep. uh, it, it's it's scarred a lot of us for life. Well, Michael, I just want to say thank you so much for taking the time to answer a few questions for us. And for everyone watching this, please go out and go see Ghost Game from Dread Presents. It'll be in your theaters on the 18th of October. And of course, if you can't catch it there, you can always catch it on on demand on the 22nd. So Michael, best of luck with the rest of the press. Hope every, I'm excited for everyone to see this and really appreciate you taking the time today. Thank you so much. It was a lot of fun. I appreciate you having me again. Thanks so much, Matt. Oh, my pleasure.